Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our new and improved YouTube channel. And thanks for joining us again. Uh, we're going to be thinking this morning about literacy. Now, we are going to be thinking today about a skill that we have looked briefly at already this year. But I want to firstly kind of revise that and recap what we already know, but also move our learning on a little bit on it as well. So we're going to be talking today about paragraphs. And the reason we're thinking about paragraphs is that we're going to be using these and trying to kind of develop this skill when we write our next Victorian diary entry, which we're going to be doing next week. So if you watched yesterday's video on workhouses, you'll know that our Victorian character is going to be being sent to the workhouse. They're going to be going to the workhouse and we're going to be writing a really fantastic diary entry from the point of view of a Victorian in the workhouse. And we're going to be using paragraphs in that piece of writing. So we need to really know and be confident about our paragraphs. So first thing to ask you then is what can you remember about paragraphs? This is a feature of writing, so the layout of writing. And it's something that we looked at initially when we began our work on MIPTOR writing. So for mums and dads at home that might be wondering what a MIPTOR is, uh, we uh, kind of invented a fish, we made up our own fish and we wrote an information text about our own fish called MIPTORs uh, back in, I think it was December. So think back to that, try to remember how we laid that out, try to remember what paragraphs are and have a quick chat about anything you can remember. Okay, so this is a uh, video we actually watched on paragraphs. I'll leave a link to that in the description to the video if you'd like to watch that again. But crucially, what we found out during that MIPTOR work was that writers often use paragraphs to organize their ideas. A paragraph is a group of sentences all about one main theme or idea. So in that little video there, there was an example of a piece of writing about running, jumping and falling over where it was all separated into those different sections. All the sentences about running were in the running section, all the sentences about jumping were in the jumping section and obviously all the sentences about falling over were in the falling over section. And the reason writers use paragraphs like this is to help them to organize their ideas. It makes it easier for our reader to follow and understand and it just groups things together nicely into sections. And that's what's really, really crucial for us. So you might remember if I sort of show you some of these, this was some learning that we did earlier in the year. This was back in November. So you might just sort of uh, see these and remember some of the learning that we did. So we organized some uh, sentences and diagrams on teeth into different sections based on what type of teeth they were. We looked at uh, um, nonfiction text on World War One, and we wrote a paragraph of our own and added some subtitles to it. And so far, our learning on paragraphs really has to do with has been to do with non fiction writing. So particularly information texts. And I think that lends itself really well to paragraphs as a sort of introduction, because um, in non fiction writing, often we do group our ideas on one main topic. So when we were writing about MIPTORs, for example, I asked you to group all of your sentences about what MIPTORs ate into one section. And you wrote one paragraph about their diet, what they ate, what they drank and so on. And then you did a separate section for, I think it was how they were discovered, for example. So you've got those really clear sections where you grouped all of your ideas about one thing into one section and all of your ideas about another thing into another section. It's a little bit less clear though, when we get to writing paragraphs in fiction writing, where perhaps we're writing a story or in our case, a diary entry. And it can be a bit less clear how we organize our writing into paragraphs when we're writing a story or a fiction piece like that. So I want to tell you today about um, a kind of acronym that we're gonna use, which I think is really handy, particularly when it comes to fiction writing, but it does actually apply to all types of writing. And it's how we can organize our paragraphs and uh, times when we are going to start a new paragraph. So I'm going to give you uh, this acronym and it's tip top. Uh, or if you like, it could be a top tip. I like calling it tip top because I call them tip top paragraphs. And this is uh, a really good type of paragraph we're going to be using. Sorry, I'll just get some 
All right, Ralph, sorry about that. So we're gonna be using tip top paragraphs in our writing. And the way you're gonna uh, write tip top paragraphs is that you are going to start a new paragraph every time you are talking about a new time, a new place, a new topic, or when you're talking about a new person. Time, place, topic, and person. And hopefully you can see there the TI comes from time, the P comes from place, the TO comes from topic, and the P comes from person. Now, in school, this is gonna be something that is going up on our working wall. So this is something that's gonna be on our literacy display board as a kind of reminder to you over time. And it is gonna be something that I refer to quite a lot, not just throughout this unit, but throughout this year. Um, and I know lots of the other teachers actually include this as part of their learning as well. So this is really, really important. This is a really good way to remember when we start a new paragraph. And I'll show you some examples of what I mean by that. So I said that we would start a new paragraph anytime you're to, talking about a new time. So if time has moved forward at all in your fiction writing, you need to start a new paragraph. Now, I've got some examples here, and I've tried to use particularly fronted adverbials because I think actually these are a really good way to show and to demonstrate why you're starting a new paragraph. So if I was writing a story and then actually I skip forward a few months, I think I, a really good way to start a new paragraph might be after a few months, blah, blah, blah. And that would show that time has moved on and that would indicate that I needed to start a new paragraph. I've said there are a few months, but it can actually just be later in the same day. If your first paragraph was about what happened at breakfast, and then you move actually forward to 3 p.m., you could start a paragraph with, at 3 p.m., we did blah, blah, blah. And that would be a really good way to show that time has passed. So if time's passed, or you're talking about a new time in your story or diary entry or anything like that, that's a good time to start a new paragraph. So the P was for place. So if in your writing, you suddenly move on to talking about a new place, that's a really good time to start a new paragraph. So again, a couple of examples here. And again, I've used front adverbials. If your character was talking about one location and then they were moving to a second location, you need to start a new paragraph. So maybe a good way of indicating that might be to say, when, well, sorry, once they got there, that would indicate they've moved from one location to a new one, so we need a new paragraph. Or maybe similarly, it's when they arrived. Again, that's your character moving from one location to another. So it'd be a new, new place, new paragraph. Topic. Now, topic, I would say, oh, sorry, I've done this in the wrong order. I'm sorry about this. I'll move to topic. Uh, topic. If uh, Topic, I would say, really is what we were doing when we organised our MIPTOR writing into different sections based on the topic that we were talking about. So when it was food, that was a paragraph on food. When it was about where um, its environment, where it was found maybe, that was a new topic, new paragraph. When we're thinking about our workhouse writing, it might be that actually your character writes all about the food in the workhouse and that's a paragraph. And then if they wanted to talk about jobs in the workhouse, that would be a new topic and a new paragraph. If they then wanted to write a section about uh, what the punishments in the workhouse were like, that would be a new topic and so a new paragraph again. Finally then, person. This is really referring to when you introduce a new character for the first time and it's a new person, or if you've got someone new speaking. So if I had a couple of Victorian girls in my writing called Maddie and Emma, I would, and they were saying things, these would each need a new line. So I'd start a new line when Maddie was saying something and then a new line again when Emma was replying. So if you've got a new person introduced or a new person speaking, again, it's a new paragraph and it needs to start a new line. Okay. So our work for today then, I want you to kind of be thinking about this new skill, this idea of starting a new paragraph whenever there's a change in time, place, topic, or person. And I've got eight examples for you here to begin with, where you're gonna be having a look at these and thinking, right, would this sentence uh, at the start of a new paragraph be there because it's a new time, place, topic, or person? So I want you to imagine that each of these are the first sentence in a brand new paragraph. Why 
are they indicating a new paragraph? Is it that it's a new time, a new place, a new topic or a person? So the first one says, later that day, Jonah realized he'd made a mistake. Later that day. Is that indicating that there's a new time, a new place, a new topic or a new person? Have a good thing. In this case, it's the later that day bit, which is really crucial here. I'll leave you to do the other eight. You can either say them out loud or you could uh, write them down if you'd like to. But in any case, pause here and then we'll go through the answers in just a moment. OK, then. so we had number one later that day. That's indicating that time has moved on. Maybe the first paragraph was about the morning and this one starts by saying later that day. So that's a new time. Number two, it's my turn to be in goal, said Poppy. Well, that's a new person speaking. We've got um, someone speaking there. We've got inverted commas to show the speech. That's a new person speaking. Number three, arriving at the bus stop, Yaman realised he'd missed the three o'clock bus. Well, arriving at the bus stop, that's a new place. If you had down there time, because you'd seen it as talking about the three o'clock bus, well, it could potentially be that as well, actually. If, actually, if uh, earlier on in, your, in the paragraph beforehand, it was talking about an earlier part of the day and then it said he was leaving for the bus stop, it could potentially be time as well. I think that arriving at the bus stop bit suggests to me that the, this is a new location in the story and so that would be a new place, but you could have time as well. The stadium was packed with football fans. Um, oh, sorry, I was oh, sorry, I've ticked the wrong box there. There you go. Uh, the stadium was packed with football fans. That indicates to me that it's a new place, that perhaps they hadn't described the stadium already. It could potentially be topic if it was, uh, if they hadn't mentioned football fans at all. But that indicates to me it's probably to do with place. Okay, number five, evening came and it began to rain heavily. Well, that uh, start there, evening came, suggests to me it's a new time. But before that, it had been talking about a new time of sorry an earlier time of day and then now evenings come i can't believe you did that shouted b so it's very unlike b she's normally very very polite i've made her, i've made her uh quite rude there sorry b that's very unlike you that's that's not something you'd normally say uh but that's a new person speaking there we've got b saying something so that's a new person speaking okay number seven looks like it's from a recipe book doesn't it next add two tablespoons of sugar. Well, that next bit indicates that we've got a new time there, I would say. Uh, looking out of the brightly lit window, Espen began to feel a lot better. Hmm, tricky one that. I think I've deliberately made that a bit of a discussion one for you now. Hopefully you've had a bit of a chat about that at home. I would say it could be a new place if he's actually sort of now looking out the window. It could be a new person, maybe if it, we hadn't really mentioned him already, I'd say that's looking like a good new place. Okay, one more thing I'd like you to have a go at today. I've got here a big news article, which I have removed the paragraphs from. So this really goes to show actually why we use paragraphs, because I think this is quite a tricky one here. That's quite an imposing bit of text. That's a big old chunk of text. And really, we're gonna want to split this up into paragraphs. So I'd like you to have a read through this, and then I want you to think, right, can you find some sensible places to break this up? We're looking for places where a new time, place, topic, or person is discussed. So have a look through this, and you could either sort of point out particular places and, and explain why, or maybe you could sort of, if you're, uh, if some of you are sort of annotating this on an iPad, you could draw a little line where you think a new paragraph should go. So pause the video here, have a read of it, have a good chat. Where can you see that a new time, place, topic or person is being discussed? OK, then. so let's have a read through together. One Direction have announced that they are to take their first break next year since getting together on the X Factor in 2010. The group are going their separate ways in March to pursue other projects. Harry Styles, Liam Payne, Louis Tomlinson and Niall Horan have all said they want to want to concentrate on their solo careers, although they haven't ruled out working together again at some point in the future. Now, I reckon some of you will have started a new paragraph here for these new people. 
Now, I think that's a perfectly fair thing to have done. And particularly if your one direction knowledge is not particularly good, that's completely fine as far as I'm concerned. However, I think really, if you know your One Direction, these, these are the four members of One Direction. So I'm not sure we're really talking about new people there. That could well be actually a continuation of that same paragraph. That one's kind of up for debate. I would say here though, we're definitely getting a new person speaking. Simon Cowell, the band's manager said, the guys have been together for five years, which is an incredible run for any boy band. It's definitely not a split and they fully intend to get back together in a few years time. So we had a new person speaking there. So that's why I've started a new paragraph for that. Now, this uh, front adverbial here gives me a really strong indication that we're now talking about a different period of time. So I'm gonna start a new paragraph for, in March, the band denied rumors that they were splitting up after Zayn Malik left to go solo. The group said they'd continue as a four piece and release their fifth record made in the AM without him. The album proved a success selling more than 2 million copies worldwide. Now, I think this front adverbial here, again, really indicates to me that we're now talking about a pretty much a completely different topic. So this is a brand new topic. It says, in other music news, the Chainsmokers have remained at number one on the top 40 chart for a seventh straight week with their single Closer. Justin Bieber remains in the number two and number three spot with Let Me Love You and Cold Water. So because this paragraph is all about um, the charts, it's not really to do with One Direction. It's still about music, but it's about a completely different music topic that's gonna deserve its own paragraph. So hopefully you've split yours up like I've done there. If you've got an extra one there, I'd say that's fine too, because that could be about a new person, particularly if you didn't know that these people were in one direction. Okay, thanks everyone. So we're gonna be using and applying this skill next week. So we're gonna still continue thinking about paragraphs, but now we've kind of recapped and revised and hopefully moved our thinking forward on paragraphs. We're gonna use that skill in next week's diary entry. And we're going to be writing uh, from the point of view of a Victorian character who is uh, there in the workhouse. Thanks for listening today. And I'll see you back here for our maths, sorry, our maths session after this.